is an example of the artist's work during her elementary period. Notice the undertones of defiance and the irony of the freshly painted wall that serves as a canvas. This Graham kid, we'll talk about this later. It's time for us to discuss something that's not a lot of fun to talk about. That's discipline. The reality is, is kids need discipline, and they won't tell you this, but they also want it from their parents. In addition, there's an incredible gift that they learn from discipline, and that's responsibility. Talking about discipline in a broad sense, it's difficult because discipline for a four-year-old looks a lot different than discipline for an 18-year-old. At least it should. For the crime of drawing on the dining room wall, I hereby sentence you to 10 minutes of time out. <laughs> Biblical discipline is more about guidance than punishment. Let me say that again. It's about guidance, not punishment. Punishment is simply quick fix parenting where guidance takes time. The Bible says the Lord corrects or disciplines those he loves, just as a father corrects a child in whom he delights. That means love and discipline go hand in hand. Okay, so what does that really mean for us? Well, for one thing, it means that when you discipline, be delicate. Discipline must be done with caution. Bodies are fragile and spirits are even more fragile. Maybe that's why the Bible warns parents not to keep scolding and nagging your children, making them angry and resentful. Clean up your room, clean up your room, clean up your room, clean up your room. Clean up your room. Delicate discipline also means that we don't react in anger. Can I tell you something that so many parents need to hear? Yelling doesn't work. I'm sorry, it just doesn't. Yelling is quick fix parenting. Screaming may result in a temporary change in behavior and it may make you feel good for a second, but over time when you're disciplining in anger, your kids aren't hearing what you're saying. They're actually hearing your spirit. And when they see you lose control, they lose respect for you. I wish there was a way that I could emphasize the fact that yelling doesn't work. Yelling doesn't work. Attention, it doesn't work. You wanna know what discipline and anger produces? Angry kids. So I beg you, when you discipline, please be delicate. I'm not saying you shouldn't get angry, not at all. Anger can be a normal reaction. I'm simply saying don't discipline when you're angry. When you calm down, your discipline will be much more effective. When it comes to spanking, I don't wanna to pretend to have the right answer, and I'm not gonna give you one. My wife and I tried everything. We tried spanking, we tried not spanking, we tried letting our kids spank us. So much confusion. But I do wanna mention one thing connected to spanking because so many people over the years have misused one biblical reference as justification for beating their children. You know the one I'm talking about. Spare the rod and spoil the child. Do you know the context of that verse? A shepherd used his rod to guide his sheep from wandering into danger. The rod wasn't used to beat the sheep. That's why it says in Psalm 23, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Remember what I said earlier about discipline? Whether it includes spanking or not, discipline should be about guidance, not punishment. One of the questions that I'm often asked is, why kids today don't seem to exhibit responsibility? And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Responsibility is not genetic. If kids lack responsibility, it's because they haven't been taught it through appropriate boundaries and discipline. And as counterintuitive as it sounds, every kid wants and needs boundaries. If they don't have them, they won't feel loved. The key is boundaries connected to consequences, consequences that are enforced. You see this all the time with parents who count to three. And I'm fine with the counting technique. One, two, Just get to three. Two and a half, two and nine tenths, uh, three thousandths away from three. Working with kids, I see the lack of responsibility manifest itself in three ways. They're as easy to remember as A, B, C. The first is apathy. This is where the kid thinks, I don't care about being responsible. The B is blame. It's not my fault, it's the dumb teacher, the stupid coach, the lame parents. And C is what I call the care for me mentality. That somebody else will figure it out or save me from the consequences. 
What do you think this generation of kids is going to tell their kids about today's culture? I don't think it's going to be like what our parents told us about, you know, I used to walk to school uphill both ways, barefoot, in the snow, after milking the cows. I think today's generation of kids are going to say something like, you know, life was so tough, I remember having to walk uphill to my friend's house next door when my mom's car was in the shop. So how do we as parents contribute to these ABCs of your responsibility? Well, do you ever feel like you're always picking up after your kids? Yeah, that's because you are. Doing great, buddy. Keep helping your mom pick up the mess you made. Good job. There's a time when you have to stop doing things for them. I realize the transition is hard, I know. This is particularly true for moms. There's an age early on when they can't do things for themselves, but at some point, you've got to allow them to learn responsibilities. If you're still brushing their teeth when they're 10, there's going to be real trouble ahead. We also contribute to irresponsibility when we solve all their problems. So how are you going to pay for that if you didn't have your purse? You're supposed to remind me to bring it. Fine. I coached my son's baseball teams when he was growing up, and I would always have a few parents who would carry their kids' gear for them. And finally, I had a meeting with the parents and said, look, your kid's 12 years old, he can carry his own gear. And the parents looked at me like I was the Antichrist. I said, I'm sorry. On this team, they carry their own gear and shoot their own steroids. Look, I get it. Your heart's in the right place, wanting to make life easy on your kid. But the truth is, if that's you, you're actually crippling your child and making life more difficult. Consequences teach kids the relationship between what they do and what happens to them. And occasionally, as parents, we need to allow them to experience failure when they make poor decisions. This is so important, because when a kid learns that behaviors have consequences, he or she will begin to think, I'm not a victim. I'm actually in control and have power over consequences through my decisions. And that's a beautiful thing. Would you take some time to think about how you currently discipline? Are you guiding your kids or punishing them? Do you discipline in anger or are you delicate with them? What about responsibility? Do you set boundaries and let your kids experience the consequences? Or are you contributing to the ABCs of irresponsibility? I realize it can be very difficult for parents to break established habits. But over time, I promise you, you can do it. Start small, and I bet if you keep your eyes open, it won't take long to find opportunities to stretch some new parenting muscles. Hey, um, you want to pull the cart while I wait here? Uh, here, you hold the groceries, and I'll go get the car. Or I'll just go get the car. 